Um, I, you know, I think at this point, if you guys are cool, I don't. I mean, it sounds like we're talking a whole lot about sort of the masking side of it. I'd love to show the auto mask just to give you a sense because we were talking about. Can um, I can I request one small thing in your code there just to demonstrate what you were talking about on the slices? Yeah, absolutely. Could you go back to line two ten, please? I can. And just duplicate that line. Uh, that way you don't lose. I always do this when I don't want to lose my original, so just copy it down to... Are we looking at the same thing? I'm realizing I'm working with the slightly modified one that... Uh... I'm, looking at, yeah, I'm looking right on the screen here with oh, you okay, got. okay, so, so we're like the ring color. Yeah, so uh, duplicate the ring color, and then okay. make uh, ring color 2, make that I modulo 255. So re no, 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 uh, no, no. The second color in the, the ring. Oh, yeah. 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 So that well, what I'm going for here is it'll change... Uh, yeah, I modulo. Uh, I per, yeah, I percent sign. Okay. Two fifty five. Now I always get this backwards, so it could be backwards. And then rerun your example. Oh yeah. See what should happen. It's not real great. Um, what I was hoping for is this would show alternating colors around your ring. Oh. But it didn't. Oh, yeah. I could have that backwards. Maybe it's 255 modulo I. I always get these two back. I don't remember. <laughs> oh. You have to go for the I mod one. I think you want I mod one. Or divided by. Yeah, we could just I mod, uh, I mod two. Something like that. I don't know. And what I'm trying to do is get it to throw out different. Uh, oh, I'm going to say a bad word. So. <laughs> oh, you know what? I'm so, okay. I'm sorry. It's uh, open parenthesis. Okay. Open parenthesis. I modulo 255. Close parenthesis. Divided by 255. I'm thinking graphics 1.0. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Oh, well, that's kind of cool. So it's just swinging around. It's probably a little bit hard to see, but so that's showing you how these rings. Can you uh, control plus or yeah. uh, whatever it is from your key? Yes. So you can see it's a little hard to see in the screencast here, but if people are looking closely, they should see banding in that upper one. Yep. It's interesting too when you talk about the banding. So a big part of it was I wanted to be able to have a ring color that had an alpha channel. I just thought that was important, uh, for, you know, because you wanted to be a but. Um, the, but because I sliced it out like that, as it was progressing, you, you would see all that banding. Um, so, uh, and, and there's a way to get around that. Uh, you know, it's by using a, a, a snapshot instead of a display group for the, the ring group. Um, a little bit of an overhead with that. It adds uh, some masking. So in terms of nested groups, it becomes a problem. It's also only available to pro subscribers. Um, one thing I did that I thought was actually kind of cool in this uh, was to uh, check that. So um, it's not always using a snapshot group. It only uses a snapshot group if you specify an alpha channel for your ring color. Um, otherwise, it uses a normal display group because I didn't want uh, you to have that extra overhead if you didn't need it, um, which was actually something that I was sort of... Um, if, if it's not too cheesy to say proud of, that I, that I did with this. I thought it was sort of uh, intuitive. Well, anything you can do to increase the performance, and by having a snapshot, you're wasting a... If you don't need the snapshot, you're wasting an alpha channel. Exactly. Not an alpha, but a uh, oh, mask. Uh, uh, yep. Yeah, alpha channels are hard to come by. Yeah. <laughs> masks are, since you only get four, I believe, on the iPad. I want to say three. I think you only get... It, three, only like yeah, three. three or four overlapping masks, and you're yeah. done. Okay. Well, now, well, that's that. That was awesome. Uh, show us the uh, the other thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's. Uh, so we'll go to my auto mask file. So this is something I just sort of threw up, and we'll make it big. Um, you know, just a Rorschach test, and I I made it colorful just so that you can see how that goes. So if you click on here, it's gonna say, it's gonna say when a touch has registered. And let me open up. Um, my main dot Lua for this. Uh, so if I comment out down here, so this is again a modularizing it. So I have a module called Auto Mask, and you can auto, you can mask an image just by passing in Auto Mask dot Mask and passing in any Corona display object, whether it's a group, an image, what have you. Um, 
So if I take that same thing here and I'm clicking out here, it's saying that a touch is registered, you know, anywhere, including the uh, the background uh, the space. But if I go ahead and mask that, uh, so you clip here and then it's gone there. So and it gets to a pretty fine point, you know, where you can get to these little smaller guys here, and it still sort of shows shows up. So for those for those listening to the podcast, uh, basically you're able to touch the, the places that have color, but you're not you're, exactly you're not not registering and touching the places that, that are just the background. Exactly. So this is not really useful in terms of you know masking in the visual sense because really it already requires an image with an alpha channel and with uh, you know transparent background. But I think you know a lot of people. I think a lot of people who are new to Corona. I think the first time you sit down with it. You, I know I did. You sort of go, oh, it's transparent. I shouldn't be able to tap that. Um, but that's not the case. Um, you know, the entire width and height of your image file is, uh, you know, touchable. It registers a touch event. So if you wanted to place an image underneath this one and you wanted to be able to touch it here, you're going to have to mask that image. So um, it's, uh, you know, and certainly you can go through and create mask images for, for all your all your stuff. But this is something I just wanted to implement. And again, it's not quite ready for prime time only because I'm dealing with trying to get around the uh, you know creation of a uh, of an image file that, that meets the strict requirements for a mask image. And and with any kind of uh, dynamic screen resolution, it becomes uh, a bit of a challenge. Um, and the math on it is not terribly difficult, but what I've discovered is uh, because it's all floating point, it becomes, like, I'm having to add checks for, uh, you know, so, okay, so we calculate, you know, I've got a, a, a stage size of 1024 by 768, but whoops, I'm running it on an iPhone 6, so it's suddenly it's bigger. Okay, well, I calculate what the math is on that, and I can get it and you can get it within one pixel, but it's going to either round up or round down depending on where it's at. And if you're off by that one pixel, forget it. The whole thing gets screwed up. And so um, it's, it's a lot of back and forth. And, you know, I, it's one of those things, too, where I have a feeling that once I nip it in the bud, it's probably going to be some terribly simple thing that I probably just didn't recognize from the get-go. Um, but it's going to get there. <laughs> hey, guys. On a previous show, I almost feel sure that um, Sergey talked about this a little bit when he was talking about his own um, perfect pixel solution, mm -hmm. and he may have addressed the the ability to deal with that round up, round down scenario. Oh, so I can't remember which show it was, but I'm pretty sure. Well, I remember he when he was link. talking about how to sort of he implemented a, a method of creating a mask. Uh, a square mask, um, uh, you know, of any size. Um, right. That was is in the same time frame as that. But what I'm talking about is, in the period right before or right after they um, changed, they added the new uh, scaling, um, the new scaling mode for Corona. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, he had come out. He Sergey had talked about how to get pixel perfect scaling um, instead, sort of like the perfect config file. And okay. he did some calculations in there that I believe handled that oh, cool. weird round up, round down problem you're talking about. Oh, cool. I'll have to check that out. And yeah, because there's a whole lot of that. So the problem becomes, you know, it, it just depends on, because I want to make this available for, for public use, I just want to try and anticipate any problems that might show up with it. And it's a whole lot of things. So again, if you're masking an image that is clearly contained within the, boundary of the boundaries of the screen, it's no problem. But I know the moment I make it available, somebody's going to want to mask an image that is bigger than the screen size, which is fine, except because you have to capture it and save it, it has to be within the screen. So, you know, you capture it, you shrink it down, you capture it, and then, you know, it's like, it's, uh, it's a whole... It's a whole kettle of fish. Because <laughs> you have to, like, shrink it down so that you can capture it properly, and then you know it's going to get blown up to a different size if the dynamics because of the dynamic screen thing you might end up with an image file. and then you have to use the mask scaling you have to use mask scale x mask scale y to get it to properly match up with it it's it's a number of moving parts but uh, 
you know, I'm confident it's it's fixable. I suppose I shouldn't be wasting this much time talking about something that's not finished yet. But uh, I think it's going to be. I think, but this is something that definitely jumped out of the progress ring. You know, I think it sort of prompted this for me. Well, I think out of uh, that discussion just a moment ago, it's either going to be uh, Chrono Geek 111 uh, or 112, because on on that show we talked about. I think we talked about dynamic masks on show 112. I'm I'm almost sure it's 111. Okay. And he had a feature in there for selecting the pixel multiple that he was going to do his scaling to, which I think is what would help with this problem. Okay. And and he's probably listening to the show, so uh, you know, probably. I should I should make a shout out to him too. Uh, yeah. Up until uh, a week or so ago, uh, this whole thing didn't was dependent on a bit of code that he shared, which was brilliant because it. He was ahead of Corona Labs by a good year, um, in that the finalized event was not being called for children objects of a uh, display group. So if anybody out there doesn't know the finalized API, like drop everything and go look it up right now in the API docs because it's one of my absolute favorite sort of unsung hero APIs within the SDK because it just it allows you to clean up everything so much. If you've got a runtime listener that's tied to an object. It's such a pain in the rear to have to, you know, keep track of that and get rid of it, you know. And this is an opportunity for you to just go in and say, "Here's what happens when I remove this object. Do this." Um, but it was sort of broken for a while in the sense that it worked if you said, "Remove this object," its finalized uh, event would be called. If uh, you uh, removed a display group, like a composer scene, for example. Um, it, it was. It, you'd think, oh great, all those children objects, all their finalized events will be called, but it wasn't. And it was one of these plugs that I think, unfortunately, it didn't get fixed for a year because Sergey had an awesome fix for it, and it was in the forums. I think they were like, oh, you know, it's already fixed there. We've got bigger fish to fry, so we'll get to that. Yeah, um, the pressure but, on that. Yeah, but you can see it, actually, if you look in the progress ring um, module, you'll see up at the top, I have, here's the finalized bug fix. So, uh, you know, this is from Sergey, and I uh, gave him a shout out in there. And I sort of added my own little thing here, which was just to test it. So it creates an object that's invisible. It removes that object. Uh, it creates a parent group. It creates an object. It removes the parent group. If the finalized event is triggered on that uh, child object, everything's cool. We don't need to, to run this fix. Uh, if it doesn't, it goes ahead and runs that fix. And this actually, because Corona uh, Labs fixed that uh, just a week or so ago, um, there was a bug in how I was doing it. I needed to add a, a delay, uh, which you see right here. Um, and uh, without that delay, it caused the thing to crash. And I was like, oh, god, OK. You know, <laughs> like Charles has been pushing this module, and now everybody's going to download the new daily build, and it's going to break. <laughs> it to happen. What's that? I said it never fails to happen. You know, you get on the show or you get like press coverage of some kind, and then you get a bug. 